Hi folks, Melvin here from optoproductions.com. One thing that's difficult to achieve when you're playing live is creating buildups and breakdowns. You only have two hands, so you can't tweak the filter, open up the reverb, change the snare drum pattern, lengthen the decay on the bass, and clap your hands like a real DJ at the same time. We need some helping hands. In my previous video, we've created a basic patch with drums, a bass, and some chords. And we can now easily control Mix Master's mutes with these two push buttons. But we haven't mapped anything yet to a physical MIDI controller. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. One way to do this is to add a MIDI map module. I've already made a tutorial about this before, but basically I just select my MIDI controller. Uh, so I've got an Arturia Beatstep Pro right here. And this is maybe not the ideal controller as I'm missing some faders, but it'll do for this example. I can just Click right here, turn on encoder, and click a button, and it's mapped. Right click to remove it again. But to make things a lot simpler, I'm actually going to use Patch Master by MindMelt. And this is a really smart module, as you can create your own user interface with knobs and buttons. And you can label everything to keep things organized. So in this case, I'm actually going to recreate the BeatStep Pro which has 16 encoders, 16 step buttons, 16 drum pads, and four transport controls. Omri Cohen has already made a great tutorial about this module, so I'll just leave a link in the description if you want to learn more. But I'm just gonna quickly bring you up to speed, so I'll right click, go to preset, and select an empty preset. Now I want to add a divider, or separator, and we can give this a name, so by right clicking, we can type in a name, channel one or whatever. I'm gonna add two medium knobs. So add new controller, knobs, medium. And I'm first gonna select a unipolar. And after that, I'll take a medium bipolar. You can always change this by right clicking on the knob. Well, not on the knob itself, but right beside it. And then we can change the mode here. Okay, then we're gonna add two buttons, so two toggle buttons, uh, latched in this case. I can just right click and select uh, duplicate. And finally, I'm gonna add two more buttons and I'll take two medium uh, momentary buttons. Oh, oh damn, I just pressed undo. Okay, that's not a smart thing to do. All right, let me skip ahead. By the way, you can also hover your mouse over a controller and press shift D to duplicate. Now when I duplicate this thing eight times, I get all the buttons from my Arturia beat step. And as you can see, it turns it into one big module, but I can still separate it if I want. I'm just gonna add one more, uh, and this will become the transport buttons. So let me grab uh, empty buttons, medium, let's make it latched. So yeah, it's a bit of work to set this up, but once you do this, you can just select everything, right click and go to save selection as, and then you can store it like a normal patch. And then if I want to import it, I just go to file, import selection and select the patch. And there it is. So that saves a lot of time. But uh, now let's think about what we're gonna map. And I think I'm gonna start with the faders of Mixmaster. So I'm gonna map these to the top row of encoders on the beat step. So these right here. I just right click on the gray area besides the button and select start mapping. Press the fader and it's mapped. Pretty simple. So a shortcut for this would be shift plus one. So that goes a lot faster. And then I'll add uh, the return. Oh, that's the wrong one. Just right click map to delete it. Shift one and let me select uh, this one and this one. So now I can label everything. So kick, snare, hi-hat, etc. And yeah, now I'm already running out of encoders as so I've only got eight left. And I also want to map the aux sense right here. And I've got two. So A and B for six channels. So I'm gonna apply a little hack here. I'm gonna map both send A and B to one encoder. So I'm gonna map this, map one to A, and I can map up to four controllers at once. 
So if I go to map 2 or the shortcut shift 2, map this to B. And as you can see, both knobs move together. But that's not what I want. So I'm going to add three more modules. And this is a bit advanced, so bear with me. I need an attenuverter, a voltage inverter, so the one by account modula, and I need a merge module. Now when I connect the attenuverter output to input 1 on the merge module, and I connect the output to the poly aux input, right here, this means that when I turn up the attenuverter, send A will go up. When I connect it to input 9, now aux B will go up. So input 2 will move channel 2, and 8 inputs further, it's channel B. And one thing you will notice that if I put the control on 12 o'clock, if I move the attenuverter up, it will move up as well, so clockwise, or I can move it counterclockwise, so it's bipolar. And we can use this to our advantage. When I connect the attenuverter straight to input 1 on the merge module, but I'll make another copy and connect that through the inverter. So this basically inverts the voltage. Now if I connect this to input number 9, and now when I set both sends to their minimum position, when I turn up the attenuverter, send A will increase. But send B won't, because the attenuverter signal is inverted. What would be 10 volts would now be minus 10 volts. So this one is plus 10, this one is minus 10. But it can't go any lower than infinity, so nothing has changed. Now if we move in the other direction, the opposite will happen. Send A won't budge, because we're sending out a negative voltage and it can't go any lower than that. But send B is inverted, so minus 10 becomes plus 10. And this means we can now control two send levels with just one control. And that's what I want. So I just need to make one more copy of the inverter and patch everything up. Alright, and now I can just map these attenuverters with Patch Master. So let me remove these two. Uh, Shift 1, map that over here. Uh, and I'll stop right there because I only use six channels right now. I just need to make sure that all the knobs are set at minimum. And turn off the mutes, of course. So when I move it up, I got a reverb. When I move it down, I got a delay. Pretty cool. It took me a while to figure this out, but I'm glad it works. Okay, so we've got faders and we've got sends. Now let me map the mute buttons. And I'll use the step buttons on the key step for that. So these right here. And you know what, I'm just going to label this first, called mute, and I'm going to copy this controller, right click, paste controller, or shift V, and now I can map it. Alright, and as you can see it also lights up, and yeah, now I'm already out of encoders, so that's why I recommend a controller with plenty of faders, but there's one thing we can do with these buttons, and if we grab Shape Master, uh, and I'm gonna clock this, but of course that only works with the Pro version. So if you've got the free version, you can use an LFO and take the saw wave output and send that to the trigger input. And then you can change the trigger mode right here to CV Playhead. And now I can clock this LFO. Of course I just need to connect the output. Uh, let's map it to... Uh, Right here. Uh, wait, let me take another output. Yeah, that's working. So yeah, that's a workaround, but I'll just use the clock input, since that's a bit faster with multiple channels. Uh, oh, and I need to use uh, 48 pulses per quarter note for that. Yeah, and instead of this uh, basal, I'm gonna send this to the filter cutoff. So for the chords, for example, and I already added a CV mixer because this one only has one CV input. So let me take this, connect that to the CV output. Okay, so when I press play on Shape Master and enable the clock, 
Uh, I still need to activate the clock sync. Oh, of course I need to put this back to automatic. Okay, so this is changing the filter. Right, now I'm just gonna map the play button over here to uh, patch master. Let's label this chord filter. Now when I press this button, I can automate the filter. Now if I change the length to 8 bars, it ramps up over a period of 8 bars before quickly ramping back down again, which is perfect for build-ups. And I'm actually also going to send this to the, the K time. I've already made a CV mix. You can even adjust the curve. And let me also turn down repeats to 1, so it only plays once. Okay, cool. So this is really useful to just press one button, open up a filter and have your hands free to tweak other stuff. After you've mapped everything to Patchmaster, you still need to make the connection between your hardware controller and VCV rack. And that's what the map module is for. So just move a physical controller and click a button. Next control and go on like that. One thing you may want to check is that some MIDI controllers have an editor like the Beatstep has. And some of these buttons were set to gate uh, and the mute buttons, for example, I want to toggle. And the drum pads were set to uh, MIDI notes instead of CC values. So I had to change that or things wouldn't work. So yeah, that's uh, something you may need to check for your controller. So I can just uh, store this on the device and then it should be set for the next time. All right, so I mapped everything. I still had a few buttons left, so I mapped those to the push buttons right here. I also went ahead and added some more shapes. So I've made one for the bass filter and this also opens up the mod. I've made one for uh, the delay feedback with the length of 16 bars and this one repeats so I can just turn it on or off when I want to and one for the reverb uh, so the decay time. And then I still had the drum pads left over, so I mapped these to the snare drum sequence. So now I can just enter in notes, which of course is a bit overkill because the Beatstep Pro is a sequencer, but uh, just to illustrate the point. Yeah, finally I had two buttons left, so I mapped those to the kick length and the hi-hat length. And I used an attenuverter for that. I've now got a toggle button, so for the hi-hat, going to the envelope input. So now it's set to a short uh, decay, and if I mute this attenuator, it will reset to the value right here. And the same for the kick drum, so when the mute is enabled, the kick drum is really short, and when it's disabled, it's long again. And oh yeah, the play button is uh, mapped to the run button. Alright, I hope this gives you some inspiration. To have a go on your own. Now let me finish this video with another quick gem showcasing this little setup. Thanks all for watching, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next week with another tutorial.